Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Katie Patrick, joined, as always, by David Fiorazzo. And it's Hello. Monday, and we're live here on Educated. Yes, it's Monday. Now, did everyone wow. have a good uh, Thanksgiving? At least all of us here in the United States. This is when we celebrate it. David, did you have a great Thanksgiving? Um, pass. No, we, we were pass. dealing with colds, and so we, oh, we were no. thankful just to be off from work and be able to rest and sleep. Sorry, well, that wasn't too exciting. But, you need some rest But and sleep I did get some good news. After getting this out. I got my shipment of books, my brand new book, on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So they are New in. book smell. Yes. Not as good as old book smell. Yeah, what is that? By the way, that's Katie's copy, Hot Off the Presses. Ooh. Too hot. Too, yeah. Too hot. I'm going to set it down. Hot. <laughs> so it's called Assault on the Image of God, and it's available on Amazon.com, ebook. Paperback will be available, let's see, Thursday of this week. All right. Now, before we actually get to the content of our show, what was the content of your show oh this morning goodness. on Worldview Matters? Worldviewmatters.tv. We talked to Holly Pivick. She's, an, uh, well, an apologist. She's got her master's degree in Christian apologetics from Biola University. And she's an expert on the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation. So we talked about counterfeit kingdoms, the NAR, and modern, quote, apostles. People in churches that call themselves apostles and prophets. Is that biblical? So, Holly Pivick, you don't want to miss this one today on worldviewmatters.tv. All right, one more thing. Before we get to the content, because people What's are asking that? our questions. Good morning to, well, good morning to us. Good afternoon. Uh, I guess it is noon now. Uh, Lorna, Adrian, how is it going? Lorna wants to know, is it on Amazon Canada? I'm pretty sure, absolutely. It All should right. be. Check it out. And, let, me, let me know if it's not, Lorna. And Adrian is asking quickly, is this about the filth being taught at schools? There's a lot in there about the transgender ideology and the demonic agendas behind that pushing it in not only K through 12, but academia. I talk about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that's Marxist driven. We talk a lot about that in the book as well. All right, so get your copy today. Now, since we were talking about schools, that's what we do around here. Thanks to COVID, you know, the school lockdown learning loss has been a real problem across much of the country, if uh, you haven't noticed. But a new study may have just uncovered at least one state and there are more, at least one state, that is dumbing down its grading standards to keep the kids just moving along. That's what you do with cattle. Yeah. You just poke them, prod them, yeah. move along, One David. state, Katie. At that's, least one state. That's quite a teaser. Ooh. Um, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook Live and you just tuned in, you haven't been with us before, let us know where you're from, please. And thanks for watching Educated Live. Um, so the blue state, students hit with high or with significant grade inflation during pandemic study shows. So Katie, apparently uh, the pandemic is either still going on or it took quite a while for this study to be done. Oh, who knows? Well, it, you know, we're all dealing with inflation in many a different way. Yeah. And even the grades of your students are right. highly inflated. I mean, we've, we've talked so much about the excuses of the public schools that, oh, students' grades are declining because of COVID. Anyway, this happens to be in Washington State, where our dear friend Heidi St. John lives, um, the busy mom. Uh, K through 12 students suffered significant grade inflation during the pandemic, raising concerns that learning loss may have had a larger effect in the classroom than previously thought, Katie, according to this new hmm, study. This is your, new information. Your I didn't thoughts know. on this new study? Oh, it's a new study, and oh, I didn't <laughs> see it coming. My shocked face is here. <laughs> <laughs> parents have, I mean, you can see it if your parents, if you're paying attention to your children, you can see what is happening right in front of you and how your kid is not understanding any of the content that they are supposedly being taught, and yet their grades are, well, I'm little Johnny's still getting A's and B's. Little Johnny's. So look, it says on his report card that he's an A student, so he must be so smart. Little so, Johnny has no understanding of what a subject and a verb are and how they go together and how they are needed to complete a sentence. But little Johnny just got an A on his grammar test. I'm a little confused, mm. Katie. Uh, the, the, I'm confused about this. Help explain this for our viewers. Yes. The report found that 
A grades for math and English mm-hmm. increased mm-hmm. from 32.9% to 56 (laughs) percent and then from 35.5 to 60 percent respectively between the spring and the fall semesters in 2020 Mm -hmm. while science 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 in air quotes jumped from 32.5 to 59 percent how does that happen (laughs) is that what you're going to ask me yeah that now this is during COVID, a very interesting time Yes. What did they do? Fudge the numbers, or yeah, it's you know we can't give out low grades for these kiddos because it might hurt their feelings. They're dealing with a lot right now, being at home, and so instead of giving students the grades that they earned for the work that they did, there, it could be a couple ways. Either their teachers are lax in the grading. If you're jumping kids who like about thirty three percent of the kids would get an A, and now fifty six percent of them are getting an A one semester apart either the teachers are getting lax in their grading and just being like okay pass them on pass them on give them a's give them a's yeah or they're doing even fewer assignments and it's like the one assignment they do counts for their entire grade and they're all getting a's because it was such an easy assignment to do there's could be a number of factors in terms of how these grades are actually being done but the main point of the story is that our kids are being given grades i'm not saying they're being their grades are being earned they're being given or assigned grades that they are not actually able to execute. And so what we're seeing, and this has been happening for decades, but it got even worse here with COVID. Oh, steroids, went on steroids. Oh yeah, they took a look at what's going on. Um, This report actually said, for instance, a student who got an A in Algebra 1, okay, back in 2015, 2016, would have been in the 73rd percentile. I got an A in Algebra 1, I'm like at the 73rd percentile. Then in 2018, 2019, I was actually in the 68th percentile. And then in 21, 22, I was in the 58th percentile. So the grades are going up, but the actual like amount of like understanding of the material is going down. They are losing the skills, but getting the the terms. And you take a look at this um, average GPA that's coming out. The one on the screen right now is for math. These kids are like, okay, 2.3, 2.2, 2.3. You know, it goes along every year. And all of a sudden, boom. We're in 2020. Yeah, yeah, you ha- it, it just spikes. You How had, is that possible? I, w- I w- my curiosity was peaked at. Grades are going up, but the understanding is going down. Correct. Okay, so re- retention. The retention's not there. It's it's. It, we have to know what's actually being taught. Uh, it is possible a teacher could just put in a grade book. Everyone gets a uh, hundred points for showing up today. Okay, here you go. I want to mention what Jim said on Facebook Live, our, our post there, our video that we're that you guys are watching, and he was a teacher, is a teacher, and he said during COVID we were told if a student did fifty percent of the work, then the student got an A automatically. Yep. That's interesting. If a student did any assignment. In that time frame, the student got a B. If a student did did not do any assignment, the student got a P for passing. Now that's a yep. new, I never knew that it even existed. A P. Oh, we just for make passing. up things. We know the whole alphabet, all the letters, plus symbols. Apparently now. And, and Mike chimed in. I agree with you, Mike. This has been going on for many, many years. But COVID kind of revealed a lot of the, um, the maybe the agenda behind this. Uh, maybe it didn't, but hi to Gregory, hi to Jen, hi to Adrian, hi to Carla online at uh, Facebook on Freedom Project. Adrian and Lorna, I'm sorry I didn't say hi to you yet. Oh, Thank you how for dare you not say hi being to such a reliable friend and, and viewer. All right. Um, so that was just the math. Let's take a look. It's not just limited to math. How about English? Because that's where I enjoy English. the most. English. Um, yeah, 2.5, 2.5. We're going along. And then all of a sudden, boom, COVID. In the fall... It's the 2.7 and jumps by spring time. The average GPA is up to a 3.3. How much language knowledge did they acquire? Because I am guessing it is not that much. But as you see, we come out of, like maybe we go back into the classroom and it drops back down to 2.7. So just like Jim said, and I bet there are a bunch of public school teachers out there who can attest to this, they were told, they were given marching orders to have to give them like one grade or or <laughs> an a an a grade or nothing and i know jim and jim is no longer in the public school system but he's doing great things in the private sector thanks jim so now, someone did post from i think it's from this person is from maine this is over we're, we're doing rumble live as well 
Um, guess what? I did a mini push in a local district in Maine highlighting great inflation prior to COVID. So this is compounding what the industry knows. The previous report was done by ACT uh, Act.org, I guess. Yep, ACT, yep. Ugh. And so, the thing is, a lot of what happened during COVID also ties into how the kids are not in the physical building, right? The kids are not, their butts are not in the seats being able to learn. They're just, oh, at home doing whatever they do. And guess what? This is still going on and it's happening in public schools now so badly that kids aren't co showing up to school, which has been chronic absenteeism has been an issue. Mm -hmm. It like escalated during COVID that people are now being paid to walk around the streets, to knock on doors, to then be like, why aren't you in school? People are getting paid to go knock on doors to ask where the children are. And so uh, this is definitely happening in, you can guess which major city. I'll give you two seconds. San Francisco. One, two, ooh, Chicago. One. Ooh, keep going. Atlanta. Baltimore. Baltimore. Always oh my Baltimore. Goodness. All right. That was so, on the list. I it was is. getting there. So, <laughs> so the student absenteeism um, we know has drastically risen. And it says nearly 70% of students attending a school during 20, the 21 22 school year uh, had suffered with the problem of having chronic absenteeism. So 70% of these schools. 70? Which is a jump. Um, from only 25%, which still is bad that one in four schools are have issues wow. with chronic absenteeism. But after COVID, then it was 70%, 70%. That's insane to me. Um, so it's gotten so mm. bad for, I mean, districts in Baltimore as well as in LA uh, well, are actually... Are the schools there, come on. Yes. Well, I they don't blame are the now, students for not wanting to go back. It's true. They are now paying people to go knock on the door. So Baltimore Public City Schools is set to pay 187 million dollars over four years to a company called concentric educational solutions um it's a company in baltimore that provides tutoring and mentorship resources for students and it even makes the home visits to remove the barriers to education according to the wall street journal here's my question if the public school is now hiring out and by hiring i mean using your tax dollars to pay for what they want to do the public school system which is supposed to be educating is now hiring out a company to do the educating. What's the point of the public school system? Hmm. Hmm. What is the point? What is the point? You well, let us minute. know. I thought it was to educate, but that's not the that's case not right. anymore. That I don't think not, that's been the that's case for about no, seventy no, no. years. But no, no. really quick, Katie, I want to say hi to Jen on Facebook Live from Hershey, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I want to say hi to Carla. And I don't know. There was another uh, new person that I didn't say hi to. Anne? Okay, Anne. Hi, hi Anne. Anne. Yes, this is crazy. This is all crazy. All of it is. Yeah. Now, uh, <clears throat> it says that uh, L.A. is making a similar effort to what Baltimore is doing. And their superintendent, Alberto Carvalho, is actually knocking on doors himself of the more than 17,000 doors they plan to knock on. 17,000. And that's one school district. Granted, it's L.A., which is, what, the largest or second largest in the whole nation? But still, 17,000 doors just because the kids are not coming to school. Like that's where we're at as a country in our education system. Like we're, we can't even get the kids to come through the doors. Now, again, this goes to the debate. Do you want them to have to go through the doors? Are they better off staying at home? In this instance, most of these times in LA, in Baltimore, it's not going to be better, a better situation for them. So you call that a defense of the public school system in this instance? Maybe, but the whole the whole system is just fraught thankfully there's a homeschool revolution and it continues but still to come we've got to move on high school students in massachusetts um well what's going on in massachusetts well Kate? they are uh making it so you know usa no way it's uh you're not allowed to <laughs> to be usa proud anymore oh no we, you can't be proud you of can't. our country yeah we're going to talk about that right after the break today's show is sponsored by our friends at my pillow Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company.
So kids are missing school all over the nation. Um, but you won't miss USA Day at one school because we can't have nice things. And so you don't get a USA Day. No longer are you allowed, David, wow. to be proud of being from this country. Not allowed. And of course, the fact that it's in Massachusetts really shocks me, considering that John Adams, my favorite of all the founders, is the one who came up with the uh, Massachusetts Constitution, which is the longest uh, state constitution in the whole nation that's still in its existence from the original. So um, <laughs> shout out to John Adams. R.I.P. He's he's your boy. He's my boy, yeah. Johnny is. Um, anyway, we have a Massachusetts high school principal who said in a letter to parents that the school had canceled their, before the holiday, they had Friday's USA theme day because they needed to avoid sparking controversy and politicization. It what, was politicized. What does that mean? It was too what does that mean? I mean, it triggers feelings when you see that usa flag it's politicized so the they, flag. Have, they have spirit week they have right? yep they have a spirit week um and this is at wellesley high school it was designed to unify the school in their run-up to their thanksgiving day football game that they had okay um but no 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 take a look friday afternoon was fitness day at wellesley high the school-wide theme for day five of spirit week ahead of their thanksgiving football game but plenty of students celebrated a different theme usa freedom day draped in red white and blue leaving the classroom the administration um, was not going to let this happen and that this was like not even a topic for discussion it was not happening olivia spagnola is part of the student unification program that decides the daily theme for students to match telling us when they proposed USA Day, they were quickly shut down by teachers and school leaders. It was not allowed because it separated people from each other at the school. In a letter to students and parents, Wellesley's principal said they shut down this theme to avoid politics and still allowed students to wear their America-themed attire if they wanted. Students and some parents took them up on the offer. I think it's absurd. I think it's sad and depressing. We came here to experience all of that, so I'm really shocked that that's going on. Michael's daughter is a student at the high school. His family moved to Wellesley from Australia. We love the American dream, freedom, we're all for it. You know, I want my daughter to experience the full thing. So this is insane. What's the controversy? By the way, kudos to you guys who are dressing up in the red, white and blue. Um, I don't I don't under is there that much hypersensitivity <laughs> yeah, apparently. To, is this part of the indoctrination of the left saying, you know, America is this evil, systemically racist country built on the backs of slaves and we are just a a rotten empire, right? And they, that's why they want socialism. They want to take care to eradicate the constitution. Well, I don't know what's going on here, Katie. I really can you, is there anything else no, that, it's that just I don't that, understand? It's that it's <laughs> it's Red, white, and blue to me. I, you know, it, it's very clear My what goodness. they're doing. The fact that we are at a point where, if we even have a USA theme day, where the kids would wear, you know, what you would wear on Fourth of July, and you can't have that at school because it what triggers one teacher, two teachers. The fact that it was the teachers who shut it down immediately tells you all that you need to know. Who's running this school? And these are the ones who are supposed to be educating our children, but they're clearly they can't even they can't even allow for red, white, and blue. I want to see what they did in, you know, June for Pride Month and Pride Year and Queer All Year and all of that yeah. stuff. If we can't even have a USA Day without it being such a thing. The fact, though, <clears throat> that blows my mind is that they changed it to Fitness Day, Fitness Friday. Is that not fat shaming? Uh, How dare they? Even that's controversial. That's controversial. The fact that you put Fitness Friday in there, USA Day includes everybody. Fat or not. It included the Australians who were in the video. How prideful they were to yeah. be here and wanted to experience that. Wow. And we can't even provide that for them. Like, I don't understand how USA Day is the most unifying of the holidays or holidays this, or days, spirit week days yeah. they put ahead, except pajama day, which let's be honest, everyone just goes to anyone who's at Walmart on any given day <laughs> celebrating pajama day. Am well, this I right? Is part, this is part of Am the I fruit right? of the corrupt teachers unions and the education system. We're seeing more and more of this rotten fruit. Uh, before we go on, hi to Stephanie. I want to say hi to, uh, I think we already touched base with Adrian. Uh, Simmons Farm, shout out to you guys. Uh, why would anyone ever send their children to a propaganda, communist-driven system? 
That is the what? What is it? The one hundred thousand dollar question. Uh, we've Billion been asking that for a while. Point. Yeah. Billion Thank you. Dollars. And I think there was one other person. But thanks for viewing on Facebook Live, friends. All right. Well, get your uh, typing fingers ready, my friends, because uh, uh -oh. we got the latest Babylon Bee headlines coming up, yes. and we need your opinions because we tend to not agree. So <laughs> I want all my friends to agree with me and. Everyone else is wrong. That's pretty much the, the long and short of it. We will come right back after the short break. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. Before we wrap up the show for the day, <laughs> I see what you did there. Let's take a look at everyone's favorite satire site, The Babylon Bee. Here are this week's top five Babylon Bee headlines. All right, we've picked our favorites. Actually, Katie has not seen these yet, so her reactions will be authentic. But let us know. We're going to number these. And you guys watching, viewing on Rumble and Facebook Live, tell us which one is your favorite. We start with. Smoke rises from White House, indicating <laughs> Biden has survived yes. another year. <laughs> Next. We cannot be associated with, e with Elon Musk, says Tim Cook, <sighs> while shaking hands with brutal Chinese dictator. Mm -hmm. Number three. Osama bin Laden. Hope poster spotted on college campuses. <laughs> Number that's four. That's, that's I'm on the right side of history, thinks college student in front of dorm posters of <laughs> Stalin, Hitler, Osama bin Laden. And finally, number five, Satan announces early <laughs> retirement thanks to TikTok. Okay, guys, Ooh. one through five, pick Ooh. your favorites. Again, <clears throat> number one was smoke rises from the White House. Number two, we cannot be associated with Elon Musk. And this guy's, you know, cozying up to the Chinese Communist Party. Number three, Osama bin Laden, hope poster, college campuses. I think that's true, though. Uh, number four, <laughs> Uh, I'm on the right side of history. I hate that expression because they're always on the wrong side. And number five, Satan announces early re retirement. Before we get to the Facebook Live responses <laughs> oh, and the rumble, man. Katie Patrick, what is your oh, favorite? Oh, man. Satan announcing his early retirement kind of sums up like what you have for number four and three. And, well... No, not number one, but four and three. Kind of Satan announcing mm -hmm. his early retirement thanks to TikTok. Everything is on TikTok now. Everyone puts all their thoughts and beliefs on TikTok, and um, yeah, it, it, Satan, his job is done. He, he, we're done. You got China controlling it, getting in the minds of all the youngins, yeah. influencing everything they do. They they are obedient to him. I guess that goes with number two then with Tim Cook and the Chinese uh, dictator as well. I mean. Yeah. Cozy's up with him. If it didn't say just if TikTok was removed from number five, I mean, that covers, I mean. Oh, that does cover, yeah. yeah, yeah Satan can yeah, retire. Can Look at what's he going can. on in America and around the world in every aspect of our culture. All the major institutions hijacked by the left, the demonic agendas that are just, just saturating our, our culture and our world, man. It's just at a place where we've never seen it in history. So I would say number five, but I got to go with the hope posters <laughs> on yeah. college campuses. Yeah. You're number Osama three. Bin Laden hope poster. Well, so far, it looks that like... That was number three. We got everyone represented here. Well, my, my, it, I also liked the, uh, I'm, I, I'm on the right side of history, right? Because people always say that, I'm on the right side of history. Of course, they, and they have no understanding idiots. at all. Yeah, yeah what they don't know world mean. history. They don't know what the Bible teaches. They, know, they don't they know, know what the history nothing. books... The, before the history books were edited and uh, republished, oh, yes. they don't know what the original history books with true history taught. So let's see. Um, Gregory. A lot of different responses yeah, here. Yeah, Gregory said two. Carla's with number one. Anne's with number four. We're all over the yeah, place today. Lorna, Lorna, Lorna said, I'll go three. But wait a minute. 
Mi- missed it. Att- okay. Oh yeah, Lorna missed oh, she, it. She did go to number three. Yep, um, yep. So yeah, we we didn't get number two. Oh yeah, Greg, yeah, we, we got, we got everyone. Two. We're all represented here. Look right. at. We are so diverse. Way to go, guys. We are so diverse. Yeah, so that's going to wrap up our top headlines for the week. More satire next time. All right. I guess that means we have to wrap up the day then, too. Go get those mm. leftover turkey legs. Eat uh, some stuffing. We missed out on turkey in the whole mashed potatoes. shebang mashed this year. Mashed potatoes. I didn't have any much of anything this I mean, it was like little. I didn't, I didn't do much. Yeah. I didn't do much. What? You let us know how your Thanksgiving went. We all hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And now it's Christmas time. It's the holiday season. Notice Christmas, Christmas season, season. guys. Don't say happy holidays. It's Boycott holiday that, that phrase. Season. Happy holidays. What does that so mean? You can say that all year round. And you can say that in July. Doc. But they I'm don't. singing the songs. They say it to eradicate Christmas. Happy holidays. Every, watch, your, watch your TV commercials. He's going to get off his soapbox Prove any wrong. moment now. Watch any, the TV commercials. Any moment now. And right. Okay, Sorry. good. All right. Well, if you do enjoy our content, please consider subscribing <laughs> to the audio podcast and our weekly media blast that we have. We are going to send you one little email every Friday. It contains the top stories of the week. And uh, simply just go to stayeducated.org to get all signed up. And, of course, we're going to be back again tomorrow with another episode. And we'll be back next Monday for Educated Live at 12 p.m. Central Time. We'll be right here on Facebook and on Rumble. And now for David and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting what we do. Until next time, stay educated.